Good morning and welcome to Virtual Fall Preview Day. My name is Jean Gaffney and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Western Washington University. I've had the great privilege of attending Western as an undergraduate and a graduate student and then working here for 18 years. And my primary function is to work with transfer students and with community college advisors to make sure that the transfer student process is clear and well-defined and that students feel well-prepared as they prepare to transition from one college or university to hopefully Western. I wanna thank you for joining us today. I really applaud you for taking the time out in what is, um, I think a lot of us are feeling a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fatigue and staring in front of our screens, whether you're currently attending college or university remotely, or you're a parent who's helping your child with their education. There just is a lot of time spent in front of these screens and we really wish that you could be joining us on our campus in person today. But we're really glad that you're here um, learning about Western in the way that we can today. I think, you know, given all the uncertainty, it's, it's, we've noticed that a lot of students are feeling hesitant about their education and their plans. And I'm really happy that you're here today looking at Western. I think it's a, a form of self care maybe to be thinking about your next stage and gaining control of what you can uh, in your, your personal educational and professional lives and, and trying to prepare for that next step. I'm going to present some information today about Western, about our location in Bellingham, the academic programs that we offer, some information about student life beyond academics, what's available on our campus as a member of our student community, talk a little bit about financial aid, that application process, and then spend quite a bit of time talking about the transfer student application process, the admissions process, what's involved, what the deadlines are, uh, how you can strengthen your application for admission. So um, you're welcome to put information in the chat if you wish. We do have some chat moderators today. I would maybe encourage you to hold off on a question in the hopes that I will answer it over the course of the info session, but you're certainly welcome to throw it in the chat if you wish to in the meantime. And we also, just as a reminder, we have in, uh, breakout sessions. You can meet one-on-one -on -one or in a small group with an admissions counselor, an associate director, assistant director, our director. We're all available throughout the day when we're not in sessions to meet individually with, with students and families. So if you maybe have a question that's better suited to your personal situation, rather than in a group setting, then we would encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity today or to connect with us later and, and follow up and make sure that you get your questions answered. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So let me first talk about um, Western and where we're located. We have, you know, we have a lot to be proud of at Western and a lot of things that make us distinctive. And certainly our academic quality of our programs is first and foremost, I think, in terms of what distinguishes a Western education. But beyond that, our location is unparalleled and really phenomenal and I think really sets us apart from other institutions that you may be looking at. The population of Bellingham, where Western's main campus is located, is about 92,000 people, residents, and our campus size is about 16,000. So Bellingham is a town that's really influenced by Western, and the students give it a lot of energy, but it isn't only a college town. So we have a lot of year-round residents um, who are business owners, who are people who are making our community great all the time, and then we get the benefit of that student energy, typically September through June as well. Our location, you can see there in the picture, that is the campus there in the middle, uh, nestled between the trees and the bay. We have a ton of opportunities for folks who really enjoy the outdoors and are really applauded nationally as a kind of an outdoor paradise. On the bay, there's opportunities for kayaking, paddleboarding, sailing. We have the Seahome Arboretum that borders campus where students can go hike. We have Mount Baker that is uh, about an hour or so um, to the east where we have obviously skiing and snow baking, snowboarding, excuse me and snowshoeing in the winter, but also great opportunities for hiking uh, in the summer. For those of you who are mountain bikers, we have Galbraith Mountain, which offers over 65 miles of single track. So a lot of opportunities for students who, who want to come and be engaged in the outdoors. 
I was not really one of those students. I have become more outdoorsy since I've moved to Bellingham 30 years ago, but I really do enjoy the opportunity to um, walk downtown. Our, our downtown is really vibrant and it's just a, a quick 10, 15 minute walk from campus. And I get to enjoy the outdoors sometimes from a coffee shop. And so there's a lot of great opportunities, really cool shops, really great places to, to grab coffee. We're kind of a foodie town, so really good food as well. And I would say probably what I consider the best ice cream shop in North America. So Bellingham has a lot to offer students uh, in our campus. I think being so close and having so much to offer when you get outside of campus is a real benefit to students. I'll talk about our academic offerings in a moment, but of course you want to choose a campus that's got more than just a particular major that you're interested in. And Western's campus community is incredibly vibrant. We have over 250 clubs and those range from academic clubs like the accounting club, women in engineering club, um, all kinds of clubs like that that are focused on a student's academic experience and help connect them with like-minded students and opportunities and internships and professional societies to um, sports clubs, um, just for fun clubs like the Harry Potter Club and the Quidditch Club, acapella, swing kids. There's just a lot of opportunities to either connect with people who share your interests or to explore new interests that you might have or just to get connected with people and do something silly like eat cereal and watch movies together. There's a club just about for everybody and if you don't find one that sparks your interest or you have a new idea for a club, it's fairly easy to connect with other students and start a new club at Western, which is a pretty cool thing. Our Ethnic Student Center houses 19 of our student clubs like the Afro-Caribbean Club, um, Filipino American Student Association, and is housed within our brand new multicultural center, which is in the heart of campus in the Viking Union, our student union near our bookstore. If you were on campus here for a tour, we would be absolutely showing off our, our new facility. It's really fantastic. But the ESC is really a home away from home for a lot of students and can be a great place um, to build community and to build leadership skills for a lot of Western students. About one in five transfer students chooses to live on campus their first quarter and the residence hall is a great way to connect with students. All of the residence halls have activities, they have resident assistants, resident directors who can help you with your personal needs, with your academic needs, with getting connected on campus. So it can be a definite benefit to be located on campus where you're close to study halls, where you're close to the library, um, tutoring centers and, and all the resources, the rec center, all those things. But for the majority of, of transfer students who don't live on campus, there are all these other ways to get engaged in student life. To support you, we also have a lot of uh, offices and really dedicated professionals to help support your educational goals at Western and beyond. And I've listed a few of those there, the Counseling Center, the Career Services Center, Student Employment Center. We also have a Student Health Center. I mentioned the, the tutoring opportunities available if you need support with math or writing or anything like that. And there's just a wide range of folks available on campus to make sure that you have the, what you need to be successful. There's athletics and intramurals as well. Of course, during this period of COVID, things are not very active in the athletics department, but typically we have some great NCAA teams and it's really fun to go out and watch a women's volleyball game or a basketball game. And it's just a great way to connect and get energized and be a part of the campus community. If you're not an NCAA athletic kind of person, then intramurals can be a really great way for you to um, maintain exercise and, and meet people who share an interest in sports as well. We have study abroad opportunities and a lot of students are really interested in studying abroad and we are just renewing also our um, interest in or a partnership rather with the National Student Exchange that allows students to pay either host or um, or home tuition and take advantage of attending a university for a term or up to a full year at a variety of partner universities in the United States and Canada and in the US territories. 
kind of furthering our um, connection with the outdoors and with students who like to maintain an athletic lifestyle, we have the Lakewood Boathouse, which is just a short bus ride away. It's a facility owned by Western on Lake Whatcom where students can take classes or just rent um, a watercraft and um, enjoy a day, a day on the lake when the weather is nice. And the outdoor center is located in the Viking Union and provides excursions if you want to get out and um, try something new, go hiking, go mountain biking. They provide rentals, they provide education, they help you fix your bike when it breaks down. It's just a great student run uh, resource as well. And then we have our student rec center, which again, we would love to be showing off to you today. But um, that was designed with student input. It's a relatively new facility that has a fantastic swimming pool, an indoor track, an indoor climbing wall, and classes and weight rooms and all the things that you would uh, expect a, a rec center to have. So really a lot of opportunities for you to get outside of the classroom, to get outside of your residence hall, or your apartment, to relieve stress, to make connections on campus. And one thing that you know, I hear a lot from students because I do work with transfer students. Many of them have started at a college or a university elsewhere. And so they've had maybe some experience attending maybe another four year school or a community college, but often they come and they they see the difference when they come to, to Western's campus. They say, this is the friendliest campus. Everyone here is so, so nice. They're so friendly. They're so welcoming. I just really want to come and be a part of this community. And I do hope that when you have the opportunity and things open up, that you will take advantage of the chance to come and, and visit Western and see for yourself all that all that is offered at our location. So I, I want to pivot a little bit and talk about the academic experience at Western. So what Western is uh, organized into seven colleges and they are listed here, not in order of importance by any means, but they are listed in order of size. And so the majority of the degrees that we offer happen to come from the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. They probably have the most departments within it. And then all the way down there to um, our smallest college, which is Fairhaven College of Interdisciplinary Studies. I want to talk about a few of these. Woodring College of Education is, um, Western was founded as a normal school, which means we were founded as a teacher education institution. And we continue to be a premier um, institution for training prospective teachers in elementary, special, early childhood, and secondary education. Within Woodring, we also offer additional programs like the Human Services Program. And um, if you're thinking about education, we really hope you look closely at Western because we have, you hear from districts and from superintendents that a Western resume will, will rise to the, the top of the pile when it comes time to hiring new teachers. Our College of Business and Economics is AACSB accredited, which is a hallmark of a quality business education and not something that's offered everywhere. So it just guarantees that you're getting the highest quality business education that's available. And then also I want to talk about Huxley College of the Environment. We celebrated our 50th anniversary. Uh, Western is very proud of Huxley. It was one of the first environmental colleges started in the nation. And, and our students, whether or not they choose to major in environmental studies or environmental science or environmental education or those programs that are offered within Huxley, they are very committed and passionate about sustainability. And our students started one of the first recycling programs in the US. We just have a, a new program starting in our residence hall around recycling. Our dining halls do an amazing job. And our students voted to have 100% renewable energy. They voted to have water bottle refilling stations on campus long before they were kind of the norm and banned bottled water sales on campus. So our students are, are really committed to making the world a better place. And I think one of the places where you see that on Western's campus is a real commitment to sustainability. And then lastly, I want to talk about Fairhaven College of Interdisciplinary Studies. Fairhaven is our smallest college at Western. It is about 400 students. And the neat thing about Fairhaven is it allows students to design their own interdisciplinary concentration. So it's small, but you get to draw from all of the um, academic opportunities that are available at an institution of Western size. So for example, I had a student that I worked with a few years ago who was a brilliant artist. She had won all kinds of awards in, our, in the arts, but she was also a, a strong math and science student. And so she came to Western originally planning to major in biology, which was the path that she started. But she just 
couldn't quite reconcile that, um, you know, maybe left brain, right brain side of herself. So she ended up pursuing a concentration at Fairhaven that blended her interests and um, her talents in both artistic endeavors and in the sciences. And now she has her dream job and she illustrates biology textbooks. So it's just one example, but Fairhaven students, um, they, they tend to be students who are very self-directed, who can enjoy the opportunity to have independent study with the support and structure that's available from faculty advisors, and also students who really have a, um, a commitment to social justice. I will say a lot of Fairhaven concentrations center around issues of, of social justice and equity. So I encourage you to look at what is available within those seven colleges offered at Western. One thing that stands apart, I think, of Western as well when it comes to the academic experience is that we are predominantly an undergraduate institution. So 95% of the students who are attending Western are here getting their first degree. And the faculty are attracted to that. They come to Western because they love their discipline and they love teaching students. And so to come to a school like Western where research opportunities are available at the undergraduate level instead of maybe reserved for graduate students as they, they would be at other institutions, faculty have the great privilege of rolling up their sleeves and doing direct research with students um, who are just really learning about the field. And so it's a great opportunity for students to take advantage of research, to um, work alongside faculty on significant projects, to write papers, to go to poster sessions and conferences and present their work. And it's a great benefit for students who are then applying to graduate schools or applying for jobs after earning their degree, because you've got faculty who've really seen you work and who have seen what you're capable of and the work that you produce and can write very authentic letters of recommendation and um, be really, really good references for students. I didn't really talk about the College of Science and Engineering, but I will say that we have um, one of the highest rates of institutions of our kind for students who go on to earn research doctorates. And I think people are often surprised by that. They think of Western as a, you know, formerly a teaching college, maybe great for psychology or things like that. But we are very strong in the natural sciences. And I think that's just a really telling statistic that so many of our graduates go on to earn research PhDs in the sciences. Here's just a list of some of the popular majors, and these are specifically those of transfer students. And popular majors aren't better majors, but you might see something here that, that you feel an affinity for. And I thought it was worth sharing just to give you a sense. There's over 175 majors and over 200 academic programs at Western. But these are ones that we often see students have an interest in pursuing here at Western. I want to mention also, we do offer select programs throughout the Puget Sound region, primarily on the Olympic Peninsula. We have partners at Olympic College, Peninsula College uh, in Bremerton, Port Angeles, and in Paulsbo. And we also have programs in Everett and a few online programs in human services and multidisciplinary studies. And so if you are a student who is located near one of those sites and partner schools that, you, and this is you see a program, obviously we don't offer all of our programs at all the sites, but we offer select programs. And if that's something that you'd like to consider, I just wanted to also mention that beyond beautiful Bellingham, we do offer some programs at other sites throughout the region as well for your consideration. So I wanna pivot a little bit right now and talk specifically around the transfer student process. Um, who is a transfer student, how you apply and how you can learn more about Western's programs and um, strengthen your application for transfer admission. So who is a transfer student? At Western, we define a transfer student as anyone who attempts college credit after high school graduation and hasn't yet earned a bachelor's degree. So if you are a high school senior and you're taking running start classes and you're gonna earn your high school diploma in June and you're also gonna stop taking community colleges and courses in June or, or even the summer after you gra graduate from high school, and you're starting Western, say, fall of 2021, we would consider you a first year running start student. If, however, you graduate high school in June and you stay at college for fall quarter, that's then that then tips you over into a transfer student. So if you earned college credit while you're in high school, you are a running start or a first year student. 
if you earn college credit after graduating high school, we kind of um, don't pay attention to that summer after high school graduation, then you would become a transfer student. And of course, if you've already earned a bachelor's degree, then um, you are a post back post baccalaureate student who was just student earning their second degree or or getting preparation for graduate school. Some schools have a minimum number of credits to kind of put you in that transfer profile and that is not the case at Western. So if you've attempted college credit after graduating high school, you will apply as a transfer student here at Western. And if you've got questions about that, please reach out to one of us and we'd be happy to talk to you about your individual circumstances. It's great if you can apply by the application deadlines. We uh, are flexible to a point around when students apply, but it's really in your best interest to meet these application priority deadlines because it allows us time to communicate with you if we're missing any documents or we need further information. And also gives you time to review both your offer of admission if you're admitted to Western as well as your financial aid package and um, get everything situated that you would need to to get ready to register for classes at our advising and orientation programs. So we admit transfer students every quarter. Certainly the majority of them come in around fall quarter. We typically get about a thousand transfer students fall quarter. Well, we bring in a sizable number on that, what we call the off quarters as well. So usually over 300 students winter and, and close to 250 quarter students um, spring quarter. And then we have a very small number of students who come summer. And summer and fall are essentially the same deadline and the same application review period. In terms of what's required to apply by those deadlines, there is an online application that is required to submit and a $60 application fee that uh, goes into the cost of processing your application by the many people who are working very hard in our office. We would not want that $60 application fee to present a barrier and we realize that um, things can be challenging at any time and particularly right, right now there are a lot of families who who are um, challenged financially. So we do op offer the opportunity to request a fee waiver and that is at the end of the application where we would typically take that $60 application fee. So please don't let that be uh, a barrier to you submitting an application for Western. We really want you to apply and we really want you to be considered and um, that's just one uh, element of the application. We do require that you send official college transcripts from every institution you've ever attended. So if you started out as a running start student, for example, at Highline College, and then you ended up getting your direct transfer agreement associates degree at Bellevue College, you might think, well, I'm getting my degree from Bellevue, so I'll send Western my Bellevue transcript and that should take care of it. And that's not the case. We need actually the original official transcripts from anywhere you've earned college credit. And so um, you'll need to request those official transcripts be sent to us by each school. And then I'll talk in detail in a minute about the, the essays that we ask on our transfer application so you can get a better sense of their purpose and, and how they're used in the application process. Students who have fewer than 40 transferable college credits, while they're considered transfer students, we feel like we don't have always enough information to base our decisions solely on the transfer coursework. And so if you're a student who's maybe only been attending college or university for a term or two, we will ask you also to send your high school transcript, and um, you'll also have to meet high school course requirements. So we would look at your high school transcript and make sure you had um, the minimum course requirements as a first year student would to Western. We'll look at your college transcripts, of course, but we will consider your high school transcript so we can get a more complete academic profile of, of the recent student that you've been. So how can you strengthen your application for admission? Well, the best thing you can do, of course, is to present a strong academic profile. We certainly want students who are strong scholars and who have um, the capability to be successful in a university environment. So doing well in college is, of course, the, the, the best thing you can do to put your, your best foot forward. But it's not the only thing. Our application process is holistic, and we will look at all kinds of things. Um, not just your cumulative grade point average, we will look at your transcripts for your grade trends. We will look at your transcripts for the courses that you've taken. Do they apply to your major? Are they relevant to the, the kinds of things that you want to study and did you do well in those courses? 
preparing for your major is really critical, uh, especially for a lot of the programs that we offer that have sequ sequential coursework or a significant amount of foundational coursework, like the College of Business and Economics or any of our science programs. You know, to be a biology major, you have to have the entire chemistry series, the entire biology series and calculus. And those are all classes that are available at all the community colleges in Washington states and, and just about every university I can think of. So preparing for your major will really set you up for success, not just in the admissions process, but will really um, streamline your time to degree and allow you to make the most um, efficient use of the upper division courses that are available within the academic departments here at Western. I will in an, a future slide yeah, give you some sense of how you can prepare for your major, how you can find out what the requirements are at Western, and then how you can determine what those courses might be at your current institution. We really encourage students to complete college level math and English before they apply. So having those foundational courses complete and transcripted at the time that you apply for admission can be really important. We realize that students might be applying and still have quite a bit of coursework to complete. If you're interested in being a transfer student in fall of 2021, we will consider your application complete if we have your transcript through this current term, so through fall of 2020, which means we might be missing a lot of your coursework, winter, spring, and summer. And so that's okay because on the application, you'll indicate to us what courses you're planning to take and we can get a sense of what your academic um, picture will look like when you start. But we really want to make sure that you've got foundational coursework done in English and college level math. So please don't put those off um, to the end because uh, it's a benefit to the admissions process if we can, can see that those are taken care of sooner rather than later. We do give some benefit to students who are completing an associate's degree within Washington State. So we accept the direct transfer agreement associate's degree, the DTA AA, as well as many of the DTA MRPs. And sorry if this is alphabet soup to some of you. Um, if you're involved in one of these programs, you will know what they mean. And um, also the Associate of Science transfer, the AST. That's not to say that we don't welcome students uh, who don't have associate's degrees. We absolutely do. But for students who are uh, transferring directly from a Washington State Community College, we really do encourage you to complete an associate's degree prior to transfer whenever possible. Community colleges are great partners of Western and we have great communication. And Washington State is, is really very, very lucky to have cooperative partnerships um, throughout the two and four-year college systems. And then writing a compelling essay will be really, really important to us understanding uh, what you're capable of, what your contributions will be to our campus community, what your interests are, uh, any challenges that you may have had. And I'll talk again about the essays in a minute. There are some programs we will ask you on the application for admission if you're also planning to apply to them. And the reason is that they have additional requirements above and beyond. Now to declare a major at Western uh, requires you know, a process that really varies throughout departments. And when you're applying for admission, you're not declaring a major and you're not applying to your major. But there are many programs where it behooves a student to simultaneously apply. And I've listed those here. So um, for example, if you're interested in art or music, I don't really have an, a good way to assess your talents in either of those arenas. And we work closely with the departments. And so, for example, if, if I have a student and I see, well, they haven't taken any music classes, but the music department is really excited about the audition, then that can be really helpful information for us to have. And so we do ask um, if you're planning to apply for those programs, and then we, we provide additional information to you on how to pursue them. I want to briefly show some of the transfer planning resources and maybe our chat mods can um, put these links in the website as well. But these are the important planning resources that can help you understand what's required for a particular program at Western and the steps that you can take to prepare. So our major guides are really helpful. They provide an overview of every major at Western. They give you some sense of what's involved in um, you know, co-curricularly. So what are the clubs that are available that supports uh, someone interested in the psychology department, for example? 
they provide sample majors, excuse me, sample career information. So if you're interested in majoring in linguistics, but you're not really sure what does a linguistics graduate do after graduation, we give some sample career uh, fields. And then we also typically provide information about what students are doing after graduation. So what schools are they admitted to for graduate coursework? Where are they working? So those are really a helpful place to start just to get kind of a big picture overview of the majors that we offer at Western. Drilling down though, our programs of study come directly from our catalog. And so the programs of study you can get to directly from our catalog. You can also link to them from the majors pagers, which are on the admissions webpage. And they provide the specific information about the courses that are required. For example, I mentioned that biology requires the biology series, the chem series, uh, and calculus. Well, you wouldn't necessarily know that unless you were looking specifically at the biology major at Western. So I encourage you to, to take a look at those. They also provide contacts for the departments and we absolutely encourage prospective students to reach out to those contacts, uh, to the department manager, to the department chair. I think sometimes students are sometimes hesitant, like, well, I haven't been admitted to Western. Maybe I haven't even applied to Western. I don't wanna take up people's time. They are fantastic. Our advisors are really terrific and they would much rather have a conversation with you sooner rather than later because it might be that they can influence your um, taking of courses that are gonna benefit you the most before you transfer. For students who are attending a, either a community college, technical college, or university in Washington State, a public university in Washington State, we have something called our Transfer Course Equivalency Guide, or the TKEG, we call it inside. The Transfer Course Equivalency Guide is essentially a crosswalk of transfer courses. And so you can go there and find out um, if the course that you've taken at, say, Bellevue College is equivalent to a course that we have listed in our program of study. So it's a great way to do some planning. You can take the courses that you've already completed. You can take the courses that you are planning to complete and make sure that they transfer to Western the way you intend them to. There's also a reverse crosswalk. So if you're looking at the program of study and you see, oh gosh, you know, I want to be an accounting major and I wonder if this financial accounting class, I wonder where I could take that because I'm, I'm planning to do that next term. You could take a look at that and see where it's offered in your community um, and, and what the course numbers would be. Of course, with community colleges in Washington State, they have a common course numbering system, which makes it fairly simple. And then the transfer student application and information is that, is that last link there. I want to talk briefly about the essays. We do ask students to submit an essay with a transfer application. We have a required question, although we do waive it for students whose college level GPA is above a 3.0. And we're really looking for some insight into what it is that you're hoping to get from your Western education. So what are your academic and professional goals? We don't have a hard and fast word limit, but we encourage students to keep their essays to about 300 to 500 words each. And um, again, this one is required for the majority of students because we're looking for some insight into your academic path and how Western fits in there. We do have two optional essays too that we refer to as tell us more. And of course, we're interested in your academic um, interests, but we also want to know what you'll bring to our campus community beyond uh, the academic piece. So really encourage you to take advantage of these essays if you want to tell us a little bit more about who you are and what your interests and commitments are and how that will translate to uh, your life as a Western student. And then the last one, we invite you to describe any special circumstances that may have impacted your grades. So we know life happens and uh, we're not always able to put our best foot forward and our grades may not really reflect our potential. If we look at your transcript, we're gonna notice grade trends, we're gonna notice upgrades, downgrades, and it's really an invitation to you to provide some context via the essay to help us understand um, things that may have impacted your grades that prevented you from, from earning a grade that may truly reflect your potential. Our application for admissions also serves as an application for scholarships for a number of scholarships that are available within the Office of Admissions. And so we encourage you, if you're interested and this resonates with you, to indicate via a checkbox that you're planning to apply and want to be considered for either the Multicultural Achievement Program or MAP scholarship or the PTK scholarship. PTK Phi Theta Kappa is the two-year college honor society available at community colleges nationwide. And again, that's not going to be used in the admissions decision, but is an opportunity for you to receive additional merit scholarship funding through the same application as the one you're using to apply for admission. 
I want to pivot a little bit and talk about financial aid because that's an important consideration for so many students. How am I going to pay for college? And so we encourage students to apply by our priority deadline, deadline excuse me, of January 31st. Uh, using either the FAFSA, which is the federal application, uh, free application for federal student age aid, or the WASPA uh, for students whose immigration status prevents them from applying the FAFSA. So th those are both available now. They became available at the beginning of the month. And you have really between now and the end of January to complete those applications and encourage you to complete them sooner rather than later. So that's one last thing you have to think about. Western provides all kinds of funding through that process. You might receive federal or state grants, loans. Uh, you can choose to be considered for a work study, which is an opportunity to uh, or have a job, a paid job, either on or off campus. That's part of your financial aid package. And then some loans that are available to either privately or um, and scholarships. We have a fantastic scholarship center that can help current students um, and some, some of those scholarships are also available to prospective students. I really, really have kind of covered all of those scholarships. In terms of private scholarships, there are a couple other opportunities here just to draw your attention to. Collegeboard.org and the washboard.org for Washington residents can be a great place for you to filter on different criteria and see what private scholarships you can apply for outside of the ones that were available institutionally. <clears throat> And to get a sense of, of tuition and cost of attendance, we've provided this information. So this gives you a sense of what it costs for the entire year. So for students who attend um, from September to June, fall, winter, spring quarters, this gives you a sense of cost of attendance. Um, Financial aid covers your full cost of attendance. It just doesn't cover just tuition and fees. And so that's an important consideration. And Western also has a monthly payment plan. So if you can't quite fathom paying the tuition quarterly, we've got um, payment plans available and we're happy to talk to students about what that could look like. I'm just gonna turn things over now to questions. See a great question. Uh, is it better to transfer with an AA? So, um, like I mentioned, we, we do give some preference in the admissions process to students who are completing an associate's degree from a Washington State Community College. And part of that is just the partnership we have as a state university. But whether or not it's, it's better to transfer is, is kind of an individual question. Um, for some students, for example, if you are um, wanting to be a language major at a smaller community college that doesn't offer upper division language study, it might very much be in your best interest to transfer prior to earning that transfer degree so that you can take the language courses at the 200 level before, um, before pursuing a major in you know, something that's not available at your current school. But for most students, um, it, it is an advantage to stay at the community college and earn the transfer degree. They offer comparable courses to what's available at Western. Um, they are more affordable. And like I said, we have really strong partnerships and we have advising workshops every year for transfer advisors and counselors to come and, and learn so that they're advising Western bound students in a way that, that makes sense and will have students really well prepared. That said, it's not a requirement to transfer with an associate's degree. And for students who are really eager to be a part of the Western community, um, or maybe who did Running Start and feel like community colleges was their high school experience and they're really ready for something different now and really wanting to engage in a, a four-year environment sooner rather than later, you're welcome to apply without an associate's degree. Also, we do offer a reverse transfer option so for students who have at least 60 credits coming from a community college, we um, invite students to connect with our academic advising center. And they will do an assessment and kind of a side by side comparison with students to determine, okay, here's what it would look like for you to finish your general university requirements at Western. And here's what it would look like for you to finish your DTA degree at a community college so you can make an informed decision. Maybe you only have two outstanding requirements to complete your associate's degree. You can complete those requirements at Western via the reverse transfer process and still get all the benefits of the associate's degree. With the DTA, the benefit of it is you come in with junior standing with 90 credits with all of your general education courses complete so that you really can hit the ground running as a junior student at Western and, and launch and hopefully into your major. So I see a question about someone who's earning an associate's degree in biology out of state <clears throat> who hasn't taken the chemistry series. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
I'm wondering if that would prevent them from getting admitted. Not necessarily. Again, we're going to look at um, your overall preparation. We'll look at the capacity that we have at Western. One of the challenges that we do have is that there was a lot of interest in the sciences at Western. And so we have a lot of students who, who need those lower division chemistry courses, biology courses, um, students who are pursuing science majors, people who are pursuing pre-professional tracks like um, pre-med, pre-dentistry, et cetera, as well as folks in um, kind of ancillary departments like kinesiology. So it, it, it won't, and I, I'm happy to, if you've got individual questions about your admissibility, I would absolutely encourage you to connect with us in a breakout room or to follow up with us via email because you can send us copies of your transcripts, you know, unofficial copies, screenshots, whatever it is. We would be more than happy to take a look at, um, at your individual circumstances and, and give you some more personalized advice about whether or not it makes sense for you to apply now or whether, whether it might be in your best interest to wait. So I would encourage you all to, um, to reach out and, and have a private conversation with, with anyone in our office. We'd be more than happy to advise you on your admissibility. I can also give you a little bit of a sense of our timeline because sometimes that's a question that students have. You know, I applied, when am I gonna hear back? We, uh, we do rolling admission. And so as students send us complete applications, we will um, make decisions on those. We'll review them and, and make decisions as we can. But we do wait until the application deadline has passed to make some of our final decisions because we want to see what the overall quality and the quantity of the applicant pool is. And so if you apply early, there's a chance you'll get a decision early. There's also a chance, um, regardless of when you'll apply, that you'll um, you'll have to wait a little bit for a decision, but we do endeavor to send all admissions decisions to students no later than six weeks after the application deadline. So for example, a student applying for spring quarter, that deadline is January 1st, and we would have decisions to you um, by the middle part of February. Once you have an admissions decision that kicks off any number of things, including um, the financial aid award that you would have access to and invitations to our programs like uh, our academic advising, course registration and orientation programming that happens. Um, so, so you can make informed choices around registering for your first quarter's um, courses. Okay, well that just about takes us to the top of the hour again. I hope that you take advantage of the opportunity to connect with us personally, whether that's via the, the Zoom breakout rooms later today, or that's a follow up with us. We do video chats throughout the week during weekdays. We are happy to look at your materials online at any time. And um, again, we just would, would rather have a personal conversation with you so you feel confident about the application process. Please don't hesitate to reach out. We really appreciate you coming and joining us today. We hope that you will apply to Western and that we can see you on campus in the near future. Thank you so much.